We're here at New Horizons RV for the yearly ambassadors meeting and I thought I would take the opportunity to film a few things that are interesting. In particular, the frame. Since we have a frame outside that is not got a unit on it yet, um, we're going to take a look at that frame. We're here at New Horizons taking a look at the frame of a Majestic. The Majestic is the customizable model from New Horizons. Um, both of the frames are very similar between the Majestic and the Summit. It just depends on you know what floor plan you have. The frame may vary a little bit. But let's take a look at this. Excuse the road noise in the back, but we're right next to I-70. So we'll work from the front to the back on this. This particular unit has a Gen Y hitch on it. The Gen Y hitch, if you're not gonna run an air ride pin box, or air ride hitch is a very, very good pin box. And you can get pin weights all the way up to around 8,500 pounds. This has a rubber torsion spring inside it. So it's very effective at cushioning the ride of the trailer. Now, all Majestics have more ride IS on them, so they have a fully independent suspension which really helps the ride of the trailer quite a bit. Um, but this, this pin box will help it even more. So this unit has four point leveling. Summits have six point leveling. Um, this has a big foot, quadra big foot leveling system on it. It has four points of leveling, as I said, and you can see that this, this rig is lifted off the ground, this frame. And you can lift the entire coach off the ground to change tires do whatever you need to do. Um, the frame is very rigid where it needs to be and will support its weight. So it makes tire maintenance very easy. It uses four separate hydraulic pumps and cylinders right here. And here's the pump and reservoir up there. And there's one for each point of lift. Here they're up front so they're easy to service, easy to get to, even when the rig is completed. And they're they're very very strong. In fact you can lift this rig with just three of them without any problem where you'd have a problem with one. The frame is robust enough to do that without sagging and twisting and maybe hurting something. Not recommended, but it can be done. So this works off a level sensor. In this temporary setup, it's sitting right here. This compartment, once this rig is completed, will have a lot of electrical stuff in it. So the battery box is placed under the belly with the AGM batteries and lithium batteries which we'll go back to in a minute. You, you can have them out of the way. This has a hinged cover on it when completed. And you know, for the few times a year you have to service your batteries, you can get down there and do that. Now, if you're gonna use lithium, you have a couple of choices. You can do it like this and insulate the bottom of it. So instead of an open grid design, which you'd have for AGMs or lead acid, you can just layer insulation in there and use heated lithium batteries or add pad heaters to non-heated lithium batteries. This keeps them out of the way, but you would be constrained to drop in batteries um, because there's not enough room in here for the larger server rack batteries. But for the AGMs and lead acid, that works quite well. Typically with lithium batteries, especially with larger battery banks, they get put into the main compartment and take up some space in there. And the reason for that is because the main compartment has heating in it. It's supplied by both furnaces. There's a duct from both furnaces. All units over 40 feet have two furnaces. So you'll, on a unit this size, I'm not quite sure how big this is. It's at least 43 feet. But all units this size would have two furnaces. So both of them duct into the main storage compartment in here. 
and if your battery bank's in there, it will never get below freezing, which is where you do not want to charge lithiums. If you charge a lithium battery below freezing, you will destroy it. Not just a little bit, you will destroy it immediately and completely, non-recoverable. So these frames are all built in-house at New Horizons and then painted, built in their own chassis department. It's a 12 inch I-beam on a six inch box tube, which you can see here. Here's the weights of this one, empty. Now New Horizons pin weights will vary depending on the unit. And of course, depending on what you put in the main compartment for storage, but they aim for 20% pin weight, not like some production units that have 15 to 16% pin weight. These, this is a hydraulic unit and brake controller for, for the slides. So brake controller here and hydraulic unit for the slides. Notice it's separate from the Bigfoot hydraulics. So two separate systems and then the hydraulic lines are routed along the frame which we'll see when we go, go to the other side. This is actually a functional unit right now. You can, you can run the slide controls and everything in and out. They were using this for demo purposes. So on Majestics, the propane is divided between each side. One tank here, one 40 pound tank here, one 40 pound tank on the other side. It balances the load a little better, but more than anything, it makes it easy to get in and out. So they're right here. It's easy to pull them out. They're not stacked one behind the other, which makes it difficult to get to the rear one. Even on a tray, when it pulls out, it was never easy to get them. So this is a big improvement. So taking a look at the frame, you can see that this is a box structure underneath here. So it acts as a torsion, torsion box. It's very strong. Um, and you can see the structure up in here. So you're not gonna get any tear away of metal here or cracking. This is either 3 16 or one quarter, depending on the specs of the rig. And heavy stuff at the bottom too. And you can see there's, a, there's cross bracing in here both to support the floor and to make the make the interior box here more rigid. And as is typical with these frames, you'll see on the other side, I get around here where you can see a little bit better. You have one carrier beam that comes up all the way under here, all the way under the main frame and terminates around here. So that's helping to carry that load of the front there. It makes for a very rigid box structure. So this, this, this is where your water system, manifold system will go. And your tanks will be in here. Gray and black will be in here. 50 gallons and 70 gallons. And then there'll be insulation all underneath this, bad insulation. And there'll be insulation coming up the sides. There'll be astrofoil type ins ins insulation on the beams to keep heat uh, and cold from moving through them. So they have a minus 10 degree guarantee that you will not freeze up. And they can do that because everything under here is insulated, very well insulated. Moving back, we'll get back to the slide mechanism in a middle, middle, minute. Um, here's where the freshwater tank goes. They try to put it as close to the axle as they can. It depends a little bit on the layout of the rig and the size of the rig. But that's a 100-gallon freshwater tank goes in there. You can see the brake lines being run between the wheels. And of course, you know, this is just a sample setup. You know, all this stuff isn't tied up permanently. Um, that'll all be revised when it goes into the shop and they start working on it. 
One interesting thing New Horizons does is they put their generator where they can, depending on the size, they put the generator underneath the living room floor. You'd think that if you look here, that, that's tied to the frame. You'd think there'd be a lot of vibration and noise because of that, but there isn't. Having had two rigs with it like that, it, it's simply not a problem. You hardly hear it in the living room. Of course, the generators these days are kind of quiet. Um, you have a better look at the Bigfoot jacks here. These are hefty jacks. So you might wonder what this is here. This is where the, the uh, power cord goes in, 50 amp power cord. There'll be uh, auto rewind in here. And there'll be enough room in this compartment to store a few things and the cord will go right up into here and stop in, in here. So for the rear jacks for the Bigfoot, you can easily service it right here. So this looks like a rear kitchen design because there's a slide on each side. There's a, there's a slide going out that way. And there's a slide going out this way. Um, not sure of the design of this one. This is the spare tire carrier hanger. And looking at the rear structure, two inch receiver and the receiver structure, you can see this thing is tied in very well. So there's some reinforcement here, there's gussets here. Let's take a look at it kind of upside down. There's a, there's a cross beam, goes across here ties into the main frame rails and then the, the gusseting goes into that so it's not going any place so these slides are hydraulic obviously and adjustable um, there's a there's a shear pin on them on each one it's hard to see but it's right here there's a little bolt there there's a class 8 bolt small bolt that goes through there and that can shear off the way these drive is let's take a look at a bigger one the way these drive is the ram pushes the ram pushes the arms out the arms have a gear at the bottom of them which I can't get down there to show you. Um, and that drives this horizontal rod to the other side. So it's a passive drive system in a sense. Um, the, the, the gear goes around as this arm goes out and it turns the other side and pushes the slide out evenly if everything's adjusted right. So it's a Lippert system, it works quite well. And you can see this is going to be gas for the kitchen. Looks like. Um, maybe it's not a rear kitchen. And electric goes in and out of the slides through these tubes. So these tubes, as the slide comes out, protects all the wiring. Keeps it all contained in one place. Keeps it neat. Here's another look at the Moride IS from the other side. Notice how the rig is off the ground. And really it's it's not just because it's an, you know, an empty frame, just a frame. Um, it'll easily pick up any rig that they would ever build. So there's some unique things on here. You know, the generator back in the back frees up a lot of storage in the front. Um, so it's kind of a unique way to do it. Works out quite well. It, it's a little bit more difficult to service back here. Um, you, kind of, you, you obviously have to crawl under, but there's plenty of headroom under here when you get under there. And it's exposed. It's not like it's wrapped up, you know, in, with a floor over it or something like that. So look at the box beam structure. 
say your 12 inch I beam and then your your tube so it's a very robust frame So some things that are minor points but interesting to get up into the pin box it used to be the on New Horizons they're very large full height runners across here for support now you'll notice it's just floor support so it's, it doesn't have to be as large there's enough structure here with this revised basement layout that you don't need a lot of structure up here what's What's the benefit of that besides saving weight and actually making it stronger? It means once the cap's on here, you can still run stuff from the main compartment in, into the pin box. You can fish stuff through there. Um, minor point, but if you're gonna modify your rig and wanna run any lines, that's, that's an important thing. So that's a quick look at the frame of a New Horizons Majestic. It's a pretty impressive piece of engineering. It works quite well. New Horizons has not had any sidewall cracking or really any issues at all related to the frame since they revised this frame a few years ago. So it's been a, been a big benefit.